So we're going to broadcast this live too. And it's going to be an MIT PhD explains. So to everyone, we're live here. We're going to explain how the climate scam models ignore clouds. Okay. So you're going to learn how this whole bloody thing is a scam. And I've talked about it, but you may want to take some notes. I'll probably do a drawing on it. Okay. So imagine there's something called the sun over here. And there's another ball here called the earth. Sun, earth. Got it? The earth's surface temperature of the earth. So if you now if you go look at the earth, consider a ball within a ball. The atmosphere around the earth. What is the atmosphere? The atmosphere is gases, right? It's all sorts of a uh, mixture of water vapor, gases, um, uh, greenhouse gases. That's that's the vapor that surrounds this, let's say this solid ball. It's not solid, but a ball which contains water on it and some land. Got it? Is that clear? So if you look at the earth and you wanted to predict the earth's environment at any point, you would have to understand the atmosphere, which is a gas, mixing with another fluid. By the way, it's a fluid, okay? Mixture of water, vapor, and all this with another fluid called the oceans, okay? But the Earth maintains a beautiful surface temperature as long as we know of 15 degrees centigrade, okay? So that's the Earth. It's like your body, right? Your body maintains a temperature of 98.6 degrees um, uh, Fahrenheit, plus or minus a degree. Everyone knows this, right? Understand? Now, when you study, everyone should go again. If you've made it this far, um, you got to go study truth, freedom, and health. But when you study truth, freedom, and health, you'll understand the system. You'll understand there's two kinds of systems in the universe, open systems and closed systems, okay? Or dumb systems and intelligent systems. A dumb system merely gets an input and it puts out an output. An intelligent system has feedback. Your body is an intelligent system. It has a thermostat in it called the hypothalamus. The hypothalamus knows how to maintain your body's temperature. You know, if it gets a little cold outside, does your body temperature, if it gets five degrees cold outside, what's your body temperature inside? 98.6 degrees, right? What happens when, when the temperature gets to 200 degrees or 100 degrees outside? Your body is 98.6. How does it do that? It has something called the hypothalamus. It says, oh, the temperature is going here. I'm going to do certain things to modulate that person's temperature, okay? That's called an intelligent system. Now, you go back to the model here. You have the sun, which is a radiating body, and it puts out 6,000 degrees Kelvin. Very hot body, okay? And puts all this radiation. So I'm over here as a sun, and I'm sending radiation to this little ball here, very small ball, it's in fact, a very minute ball called the earth. All this radiation is coming to the earth. How much radiation is coming to the earth? How much? Well, I'll tell you, radiation is measured in energy. Energy is measured in something called watts, right? If I have a light bulb here, I think the light bulb says 100 watts, 0.1 kilowatts. Got it? And you can calculate how much, you know, you get 100 uh, amperes of power. I mean, you can you can do V equals IR and calculate this. I'm not going to go there, but um, there's a certain amount of energy that is hitting the Earth's surface. In fact, how much is hitting it? 340 watts per meter. So for every square meter of the Earth's ball, okay, that comes in, 340 watts per meter. Okay, you may want to write that down. So here's the Earth's ball. Here's the sun. 340 watts per meter of energy is hitting it. It's like me, imagine I took a big uh, heating lamp and I was uh, put a fan and I'm sending all this heat onto your body. You're going to start sweating, right? What is sweat? Sweat is your body releasing that heat so your body maintains 98.6, right? Does that make sense? So your body has a feedback system. It goes, wow, it's getting hot outside. I better sweat dogs pant, right? Their dog hands out his tongue and he starts panting because he's trying to cool himself. Okay. So you got all this heat coming in, 340 watts per meter, and all of that energy has to be dissipated. Why? Because if 340 watts per meter was hitting your body and you didn't get rid of it, what would happen? You would burn up. 
Agreed? That's called the law of thermodynamics, right? Energy cannot be created nor destroyed. So 340 watts per meter hit this little ball. That 340 watts per meter has to be dissipated in order for the earth not to burn up. Is the earth burning up right now? No. Okay. We're still here. We've been here for billions of years. How? Well, when that 340 watts per meter comes, remember I said you have the ball now. It has a surface or the outside atmosphere and then the inner core, right? That we live on right now. And there's the oceans, all part of that surface. All right. So of that 340 watts per meter, right away, 140 watts per meter literally bounces off the atmosphere. Boom. Okay. It hits and it bounces off. So how much do you have left that you have to deal with? 200 watts per meter. Okay. It would be no different than me, again, taking a heating lamp and shoving it at you. And you had um, some cooling blanket around you and um, 140 bounced off. So you have 200 watts per meter left. So what does the earth do? How does the earth get rid of that 240 watts per meter? How does it do it? Because remember, the surface temperature of the earth is 15 degrees Celsius. Because if it allowed that um, 200 watts per meter to come in, and I forget the exact number, I believe for every three watts per meter, the earth's temperature rises one degree. That could be off here, okay? But for every, five, let's say let's say it's five watts per meter, the Earth's temperature goes up by one, which means if all 200 watts per meter was never dissipated, the Earth's temperature would go up by 40 degrees. We'd all be dead, okay? Does that make sense? So we have to get rid of that 240, sorry, that 200 watts per meter. So how does the Earth do it? The Earth, again, is not a dumb system. It doesn't just take an input and put out an output and raise the temperature. No, it's a smart system. And this is what these stupid idiots don't know. People who don't study chemistry, science systems. They don't know the earth is as intelligent. It's a living being. So what does the earth do? When that 200 watts per meter does, remember it's coming into, the radiation is now coming into the atmosphere. The atmosphere is composed of, what's the atmosphere composed of? Yes, there are greenhouse gases, CO2 among other things. There are clouds, right? Vapor. And through the interaction of the atmosphere and the oceans, that other 200 watts per meter is dissipated. You ever take a pot of water and you heat it and you suddenly turn it off, you see all those beautiful clouds go up, you know, the steam, right? It's like a steam vapor rising and that gets dissipated. So the remaining 200 watts per meter gets dissipated. Now, the climate scam bullshitters have created models, mathematical models, and they're saying that two, of the 200 watts per meter that comes in the sun, we're going to increase the Earth's temperature by two degrees because we're not letting all that 200 watts per meter escape. Got it? And how are they calculating this? Everyone uh, with me so far? Any questions? Okay. So they they ran mathematical models. The mathematical models they created were modeling the oceans, which is a very turbulent fluid, mixing with the atmosphere, another turbulent fluid. And they have done apparently these complex calculations on supercomputers. And they have said that the Earth's temperature is going to go up by two degrees because we can't dissipate around five watts per meter. Okay? I'm giving you rough numbers. They're saying, of the 200 watts per meter that comes in, we are only going to be able to get 195 watts per meter up. The other five watts per meter is going to remain in the atmosphere and it's going to increase the surface temperature of the earth. And they say that's doing that because of the CO2 gases in the atmosphere, which are going to trap in that extra energy. You guys got it? Now, every scientist, radiative physics, will tell you, yes, CO2 is a greenhouse gas. Yes, it, greenhouse gases can increase temperature. But the issue is how much. That is science. Well, all the models that they've done have never taken into account one of the most important phenomenon, clouds. None of their models include clouds. None of their models have taken into 
account, clouds form and they dissipate, they grow tall, etc. So Dick Lindzen, a professor at MIT in 2002, did some initial works on the clouds. It's fascinating. And he called it the iris effect. Everyone know what the iris is? If you look at your eyes in the mirror, you will see your whites of your eyes. And then you'll see a little pupil. And around the pupil is a big brown. You know, that's the color of your eyes, blue, you know, green. That's your iris. And if I were to shine a very bright light at you, your pupils will get very small, right? They know how to close. If the lights get very dim, your pupils open it. And your iris knows how to do that. And what Dick Lindzen discovered was that the clouds actually form and they move like the iris. So they can control how much radiation stays in or out. Billions of years ago, the Earth's temperature, the sun's temperature is 30% less than it is today. So if the sun's temperature is 30% less, what would you think? You would think, wow, the Earth would be an ice ball, right? It would be an ice cube. Was it? No, there were waters flowing on the earth. And the idiots, guys like Carl Sagan said, oh, there was a lot of greenhouse gases. They trapped the radiation. Well, when they found the ice cores, they don't find anywhere near that much CO2. It was the clouds. It was a cloud use the iris effect to keep the radiation that came in and kept the earth warm. When the earth gets too warm, the clouds reform in very spectacular ways to let more radiation out. You guys get it? So no one has included clouds. And in fact, clouds have such a powerful effect that even raises in greenhouse effect are minuscule. In fact, CO2 is not a pollutant. All the potheads, when they build a greenhouse, will pump CO2 in there. It was because of high CO2 levels that life even came at this level. When CO2 levels go below about 180 parts per million, everything dies on the planet. In fact, about 100 years, 200 years ago, or a couple thousand years ago, the CO2 levels were very low. We could handle CO2 levels 50 times, five times, I'm sorry, five times what it is today, easily. So the entire thing is bullshit. It's just pure bullshit. Now, I've been talking about this for 10 years. A couple of days ago, a Nobel Prize scientist at, a, at a, a conference in Korea said the whole thing is bullshit. And he said it is being done to de depopulate the planet. Because once they promote the climate scam, then we're start. I mean, I just spoke to a friend in uh, Poland. He said they have fucking windmills everywhere and solar and they're all falling apart. They're all falling apart. And because of that, people aren't going to be able to have food, you see? Because you need to burn. And, and we've gotten very good at burning fossil fuels. And the issue is not CO2, it's pollution. China now pollutes the hell out of the world. And that's what the Paris Accords allows China to double their pollution. That's what Booby fucking Kennedy supported. Booby Kennedy supported the Paris Accords. So now the problem with science and the problem with what I'm sharing with you is we are having less and less people who want to sit their fucking ass down and study the shit. They're all lazy. So you guys fortunately have, again, without any arrogance, someone like me able to explain this in hopefully simple ways and you can explain it to others. But the bottom line is they have not included the clouds. It's like removing your iris out of your eye and saying, oh, my God, if you get so if you put someone in a bright room, they're going to get blinded. No, your iris knows how to control it. We're an intelligent system. The Earth is an intelligent system. OK. It's a very powerful, intelligent system. The reason people are doing geoengineering is because they actually want to fuck this up. <laughs> They actually want to fuck up the Earth's natural, the clouds' natural process. Someone's asking that. That's why they're doing, quote unquote, spraying stuff, because they know the Earth knows how to take care of itself. What they're doing will actually screw up the radiation being released. So this is all being done because they want people attached to fossil fuel, uh, getting away from fossil fuels. And it's not because I'm into fossil fuels or not. I don't get paid by the fossil fuel companies. But the bottom line is they do want to destroy large uh, amounts of people on the planet. That's what this is about. And again, 
you know, booby fucking Kennedy supported lockdowns saying that it would save, um, you know, it would protect COVID, you know, it would stop COVID and it would save the climate. Okay. And so where we are right now is they are going to rapidly move to carbon tax and every one of us is going to be taxed. The forest fires burning in Canada, they love forest fires because it justifies carbon tax. They're going to say, oh, it was the heating of the planet that caused these fires. See, we got to put out these fires. Meanwhile, they, they don't spend enough money on forest management. They fired all their workers who could put out the fires because they didn't want to get the vaccine. They don't buy enough infrastructure of the, of the airplanes to put out the forest fires. And then they stop farmers from stopping the forest fires. You see, they want the forest fires. Because then you go, oh, my God, the forest fires. we got to stop the forest fires. We need to be carbon taxed. Again, booby fucking Kennedy supports carbon tax. Elon Musk supports carbon tax. Greta Thornburg supports carbon tax. It is about subjugating people and the working class people of the world. That's what this is about. But the bottom line, a simple thing like clouds, they did not include in their model. And if you add the clouds, there is no big deal. All right. So that's the carbon, that's the climate uh, scam. Uh, because it include it completely ignores models. All right, everyone out on uh, Twitter world or uh, Facebook world, uh, please review this video and I hope you enjoyed it. And um, all of you out there, become a truth, freedom, and health warrior. Um, you know, I, I I do a lot of this knowledge, but the way you can support yourself in our movement is go to truth, freedom, and health, contribute, become a warrior scholar, and also go. Uh, you you understand that I'm running for president. Go to shivaforpresident.com support this historic campaign, get a bumper sticker, invite your friends to our town halls and get involved, contribute and donate. There's nothing like us out there, period. Um, they steal our content, right? But they can't steal our movement. They'll try though. All right. Thank you, everyone.